Hey, welcome. Um, this is Frake. Uh, I'm just going to take you through how you can use some of the files that I posted. Um, first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to download the files. Um, you should be, uh, they should be at the bottom of the article on my webpage. And after that, what you're going to do is you're going to go to sideeffects.com. That is S-I-D-E-F-X dot com. After that, you're going to go to download. And you're going to make a little account. You can go log in. And then you can get your free personal learning edition. And you can just hit download. That's going to bring down the build. And after you bring down the build, you can just simply install it. After installing it, uh, you can open the hip files. So we're going to look at the two files today. Um, this is the simple fence asset, and uh, the first thing you'll see when you open it is this. Um, sorry for my monitor, I've got a 4K monitor, so it's a little high res, but hopefully that'll be okay for you guys. So, what are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at some terribly ugly sheep models. We're looking at a uh, simple fence. We've got you know some difference between inside and outside grass, and we've got a fancy fence here. And we've got a set of controls here on the right. So this is basically the graph. The node network generates everything. We've got some parameters that we can set here, and um, that's all fine and dandy. But how do we actually use this thing? Well, first things first. Um, we can just hold spacebar and hold the middle mouse button and we can sort of scroll around and with the left mouse button we can rotate middle mouse button we can pan and the left mouse button we can zoom in or out or if you prefer you can also just use the, the mouse wheel now knowing that we can zoom in on this graph and what we can see is that there's basically at the very top we have two things are coming into this graph and then a bunch of things happen and then all the way at the bottom is our output. That's our final result. So let's take a look at what the two inputs are. Well, the input here is a curve. And the second input here is a grid to which we've applied some noise. So we can, uh, we can you know, have some terrain. And we can change this noise around. We can make this any terrain. This could be any terrain that you've made yourself before or whatever. The main thing is, is that we can have this curve here and what's going to happen to that curve is it's going to result in the final shape. So if I'm going to change this curve we're going to see this look a little different. So I can move this guy around as you can see here and our sheep update. So we can change the shape of the, of the pen and our sheep are still halfway on the inside. So how does this thing work? Now I'm not going to look at every single node, but this will give you more or less an idea. So the first thing we do is we put our terrain, our, our, um, our curve under the ground. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, um, we're going to project it upwards onto the terrain. Now why is this there? Because if we have, for example, some, some more significant uh, some more significant terrain, we want to make sure that our fence actually follows follows the contours of the landscape. Now, of course, I exaggerated this a lot here, but you get the idea. If, if there were some, uh, some actual changes in the height, we want our fence to always be on top of the ground. So we're going to project these points. And then what we're going to do is we're going to basically figure out where to place the, um, the main supports and the small supports. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to assign a color and on the other side we're going to generate a bunch of extra points. Now these extra points are quite useful. These extra points here are going to be where all the supports are but we want to identify the ones that are going to be on the corners. So what we're going to do is we're going to transfer the color from the original points onto our new points. And now we can see the corners are tagged in red and the new points are tagged in black. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try and identify what the direction is along this curve. So what we're doing is we're basically uh, making a direction here 
So we're basically creating a tangent. So it's a, a tangent is a is a curve that follows the direction of a curve. Uh, is, is a vector that follows the direction of a curve. We also create an attribute called up, which basically just points straight up. And so now what we can do is we can split this into both the corners and the normal supports, and then we can copy geometry to them. And this geometry is made here. And that geometry gets copied to those points, and now here we go. We have a bunch of pillars, both the main supports as well as the small supports in the middle. That's pretty good, but we're going to need to do some more things. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and take the same result that we had here, this curve, and we're going to add some horizontal boards. Now we're going to do, we're just going to move it up a little bit, and we're going to sweep another shape over it. So basically we're going to take this shape and we're going to loft it across the other shape. And the result that that gives you is this. We're just going to do the exact same thing again at a slightly higher height. And now what we have is we've got all our pillars and we've also got our supports. Now we could leave it here, but I figured we could make it a little bit nicer. And so we're going to add the pickets of our picket fence. So what we're going to do so we're going to, again, grab um, grab these guys, we're going to resample them, so we're going to have additional positions. Um, we're recalculating the direction just to make sure that everything is, is good. Now, it, we, could, we could choose not to do this, but you're going to see what happens. It's, it gets smoothly interpolated, so that looks a little wonky. What we want is we want our boards to lie flat on this plane. So we're going to apply this. We're going to get rid of the corners because we don't want any pickets on the corners where our, you know, our actual, um, our actual uh, supports are. And then we're going to copy our pickets to that, which gives us this. And then of course, when we put that all together, we end up having a pretty, pretty simple, but pretty, system so we can add these guys together in here now and then there's really only one thing left and that's adding our sheep so what we're doing in this case is we're taking taking this environment right here the uh, sorry we're taking our curve so our original input curve we're shrinking it then we're just scattering some points on it we're making sure those points get projected onto our terrain, because our sheep are always on top of the terrain. And then we create some random attributes for direction and scale. And then we copy our wonderful sheep onto it. Now the sheep here is a terribly ugly model, but it doesn't matter. It's just it's just an example. I didn't want to actually um, ship you know an actual model and have to secure all that. So when we put this all together, we get this asset. There's only one thing I didn't quite cover yet, which is how did we get the color to be different on the outside and to the inside? Well, what we do is we have um, standard color applied to our entire terrain. And then what we do is we, tr we project our terrain down onto our curve, but we don't actually change the position of the points. See, so transform points is off we just say the point intersection distance. Now, if that point intersection distance is bigger than a certain, certain distance, let's say 0 0.4 in this case, we're going to change the color. That's a little bit of a harsh, harsh transition. So I just smooth out the color a little bit, and there we go. That's our asset. Now, oh, whoopsie. I intentionally didn't collapse this asset, but what you could do, if you wanted to, you could collapse this asset by pressing Shift C, and you can make it into your own node. And you can even add your own controls on here. I have a, I have a tutorial on my page that goes through how to do that. Um, but you could change the distance between the supports, the size of, um, 
the size of the, the size of the pickets, maybe the type of objects you want to input, whatever you want. Go to town. Anyways, the next video is going to be about the uh, better looking uh, dungeon asset, and I hope you like it. Hopefully this will give you an idea on how to, how to play around with this and customize it to your liking. Bye-bye.